This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. All right, hello, and welcome to a, another episode of Design Safe Radio. So excited to have you here today. And we have uh, Pedro Fernandez Caban, who is an assistant professor in civil and environmental engineering at Florida AM uh, and Florida State University down in Tallahassee. Welcome, Pedro. Good to have you. Thank you for having me, Dan. It's a pleasure. Uh, I am super excited to chat with you today. Uh, your your background is not where you are uh, currently, but has a really exciting piece of machinery that uh, I can't wait to to talk to our audience about because I've seen it in person a couple of times and it is pretty mind-bogglingly amazing. So let's talk about your research first. You are especially interested in low-rise buildings and the roof systems on those and helping them be uh, resistant to hurricane winds. So can you give us a bit of an overview of your research? What are low-rise buildings? Why is this important? Yeah, so uh, again, thanks for having me, Dan. So essentially, when engineers, we, we typically try to divide high-rise buildings versus low-rise buildings, uh, primarily because the wind action on the structure and essentially what we're interested in looking at is different. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, we're focusing on low-rise buildings, and specifically, we're looking at roof loads. Uh, and then typically, when you're looking at trying to quantify the roof pressures, roof forces, uh, wind forces on the roof, they're typically what we call negative pressures or suction pressures. So those are the ones that generate uplift. So when we're looking at uh, over in the news, for example, you see a lot of roof failures where basically you see uplift happening. So those are the critical forces that typically govern the, the wind design on, on low-rise buildings primarily. So, so, those so when you say low-rise building, you're talking about like a typical home or most businesses or like a Walmart or a school and not things like apartment buildings and skyscrapers and stuff. Correct. So yeah, typically a uh, low-rise building, it consists of residential housing, one-story, two-story uh, buildings. So for example, commercial industrial buildings that are one, two stories are typically considered low-rise buildings. Uh, so typically those are the ones where we see roof failure happening and, and essentially governing the, the wind design of, of those types of structures. Great. Well, as, as someone who currently is in a low-rise building, I thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> Um, so great. So we've, we've kind of categorized the, the space that you're playing in the playground that you're playing on. Um, so you're doing some experiments now, at the really amazing university of Florida boundary layer wind tunnel, which is one of our, our two Nary wind facilities. And there you've got a really amazing piece of technology. That's, that's fairly new there called the flow field modulator, which sounds like something that Marvin, the Martian would have invented. Um, it's pretty amazing. And it's right over your head. Can you tell me what this is and how it aids your experiments? Yeah, so, and actually I was I was quite impressed with it. It's, but it's, it's also really loud. Uh, it's so when, really loud. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> it yes. sounds uh, like an angry swarm of bees. <laughs> yeah, so you can definitely hear it and you can feel it when you're there. But, uh, and actually we're, we're currently, as we speak, conducting wind tunnel tests at the, at the Neary site there at the University of Florida. Uh, so, so the flow field modulator is a unique instrument, uh, and what's unique about it is it gives us the ability to control the large-scale turbulent gust structures that we see, for example, in hurricanes and large-scale synoptic uh, wind events. So these are wind events of long duration. So hurricane would be an example of one uh, of those types of wind conditions, and us wind engineers have had some difficulties trying to simulate the large scale gust structures in wind tunnels. Um, and then the flow field modulator allows us to impart these larger, we call them eddies, but essentially those are turbulent gust structures that could impact uh, the wind forces, let's say mm -hmm. on the roof of a low rise building. So that's what we're trying to to simulate physically in, in the wind tunnel. It's so a Florida. typical wind tunnel, and even Florida's wind tunnel before this, you just get a big straight blast of wind for as long as you want, right? Mm -hmm. But an actual hurricane doesn't do that. It changes a lot. Uh, you get swirls, these eddies. You get changes in you know different directions of wind, even as the hurricane goes for a long time. 
it changes through that time. Is that kind of what you're, what you're getting at? Correct, correct. So basically, uh, uh, hurricane winds, for example, they bring multiple uh, a spectrum of eddies. So they have smaller eddies, larger eddies. So in the wind tunnel, for example, for decades, we've been able to properly, reason, reasonably well simulate the smaller eddies using, well, in, the, in Florida at UF, they have the terraformer. So the terraformer can essentially simulate the smaller eddies quite well. So those eddies are generated by primarily mechanical turbulence from, from the uh, Earth's surface. Now the flow field modulator, we call it the, the FFM, then that instrument can impart the larger eddies. So then we can get a better spectrum of eddies that we can simulate in the tunnel, which would approximate it would be a better or improved representation of what's happening in real life. Yeah. And th this machine is amazing. It's it's what, like 350 individual uh, propellers, uh, it's like drone drone propellers in these 3D printed tubes. It kind of looks like a honeycomb. Right. So so there's uh, it's hard to count them I and mean, there's too many, but essentially there are 319 cells. Uh, each cell has propellers and essentially we can modify the RPM, so the velocity in which those propellers are spinning, we can control that with, with uh, good accuracy so that we can essentially uh, modulate, essentially, the, the uh, gust structures that we can generate with it. Yeah, it, they're, they're pretty amazing. I, I was visiting uh, Florida when they were first putting it together, and I got to just stand in front of one of those cells. I, it's really powerful. I, I think you can add up... I can't remember if it's like 40 miles an hour, plus or minus, is, is something like that for each cell? Oh, yes. Uh, so so essentially each cell, what we're trying to impart on the flow is fluctuation. So we're trying yeah. to make fluctuations of the velocity. And we can rapidly change the fluctuations uh, and control them uh, relatively well. Uh, and I was used to running traditional wind tunnel experiments without the FFM. And I mean, they're pretty quiet, but the flow is typically comes out the uh, upwind of, let's say, the terraformer comes relatively constant, pretty quiet. And yeah, so so these large scale fluctuations, uh, they're they're as I mentioned earlier, they're loud. But uh, <laughs> it, we've we've run. Yeah, we've run some preliminary tests uh, earlier this this year, and it looks to be working quite well for what it was designed for yeah and you can um because you can individually program each of these 319 cells you can have the the wave of pressure go across or up and down or you know any combination that you want in real time it's, it's really amazing correct correct yeah typically we try to change the uh velocity fluctuations vertically so we stratify them vertically so we have rows of cells in each row, we can assign a different, let's say, velocity fluctuation, and we can change it as we go up, and we can also do that laterally. Uh, so we have a lot of versatility as far as uh, the, the the wind field that we can generate. I'll have to find uh, and see if we can put a link to this in the show notes. Oh, yeah, I do have a video. Yeah, um, I've got a video of a couple of these cells that we'll, we'll send to our, our awesome podcast editing team and see if we can put a couple of links in there for people to, to see mm -hmm. what this kind of looks like on an individual basis plus some way better videos that florida's put together <laughs> since the true true because uh, you kind of have to see it to believe it. i mean the picture that you've got behind you is great um mm -hmm. but yeah it yeah it doesn't do justice it doesn't do justice those. thanks for listening to today's episode of design safe radio be sure to like and subscribe on whatever platform you happen to be listening to this on it really helps people find our show Thanks to our amazing sponsors, the National Science Foundation and the NARI Network Coordination Office, which is award number 2129782. Big thank you to Marty Lachance, our guest booker and topic researcher extraordinaire, and Raquel Ruiz, who is our video and audio editor. I'm your host and NARI Facility Scheduling and Operations Coordinator, Dan Zaner. We'll see you in the next episode. Until then, stay resilient.